Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of my combo fans out there. This is your captain speaking. If you give me just a few minutes, I'm going to let you and everybody else know that this stream is starting and hop on and I'll see you in just a bit. Got you there, didn't I? I remembered to unmute this time. It's totally fair. Welcome back, everybody. I'm a little bit late today, but I'm very glad that you're all here and hanging out with me today. It's going to be a really, really fun one. Fourth, Ilorngas. Uh, it's the name of a card, but like also we're going to have fun with the Lord of the Rings references and everything like that. Fantastic. Yeah, thanks, Jason. I am getting there. I am getting better, always improving. It's going to be a fun time. Uh, yeah, it's absolutely your favorite streamer on theepicstorm.com. Let me see more of those emotes. Uh, also, theepicstorm.com. Uh, I guess it's just the Epic Storm YouTube. That's all right. doesn't matter. Welcome, everybody. We are going to be playing with some brand new cards today. Today is Lord of the Rings Day at the epic storm we're going to be playing with let's see where are they yeah here they are i put them over here orcish bowmasters and the one ring in consort with world gorger dragon this is a super super fun uh interaction i think um jason i think my my internet's doing all right today uh, storms were yesterday missed them by that much so if you all are not familiar, World Gorger Dragon is a big 7-7 seven, seven nightmare dragon for three and three red. It has flying and trample. When World Gorger Dragon enters the battlefield, exile all other permanents you control. Seems like a pretty big downside, right? Six mana for a 7-7 seven, seven flying trample. Doesn't matter if it's a nightmare dragon. That's not very good. However, uh, it also has this extra thing, when World Gorger Dragon leaves the battlefield, return all of the exiled cards to the battlefield under their owner's control. Okay, so if it dies, I get my stuff back. Well, that's really not that important, right? So, uh, mm, yeah, it's a little risky, right, Alex? If we animate dead this World Gorger Dragon, animate dead is an enchantment a permanent that essentially enchants a creature and reanimates it. It's got a lot of text. However, enters the battlefield, it's going to um, attach to a creature and reanimate it, essentially. And then when Animate Dead leaves the battlefield, that creature's controller uh, sacrifices it, right? And so uh, when I Animate Dead, a World Gorger Dragon, World Gorger Dragon comes into play with Animate Dead, enchanting it. 
Ward Gorger Dragons enters the battlefield, um, trigger goes on the stack, and I exile all other permanents, including my Animate Dead. When Animate Dead leaves the battlefield, I sacrifice my World Gorger Dragon. And when World Gorger Dragon leaves the battlefield, in this case it's a sacrifice, it dies, um, return exiled cards to their battlefield under their owner's control. Well, that includes all of my lands and my Animate Dead and anything else that I might happen to have on the battlefield. So with Animate Dead coming back, I can then reanimate World Gorger Dragon and that says a beginning of a loop. It's gonna be kind of click intensive, but we're gonna get through that. And I can make an infinite amount of mana or as much mana as I can click in 25 minutes and any other permanent that has an enters the battlefield trigger will trigger. So for example, I can grief my opponent over and over and over again and I can make them hellbent. Okay, sure, fine, well, that, whatever. I can now play with Lord of the Rings cards. Orcish Bowmasters, a fantastic card that's being played all throughout every format um, it's legal in. Not as much as the one we're going to talk about in just a second. But it's a two mana, one one Orc Archer with Flash. When Orcish Bowmasters enters the battlefield and whenever an opponent draws a card except for the first one they draw on their draw step, then Orcish Bowmasters deals one damage to any target and I amass one. Uh, orcs one, excuse me, specifically. So amassing orcs one means that I create an orc army and put a plus one plus one counter on it. It's a zero zero army and then I put a plus one plus one counter on it. If I uh, already have an orc army, then I just put a plus one plus one counter on my original army. Um, so you'll see how that plays out. But ETBs deal one damage to any target. And if I am blinking, essentially, everything with this World Gorger Animate Dead combo, then every single time Orcish Bowmasters enters the battlefield, it pings my opponent for one. Infinitely doing that means that I can destroy my opponent with one life at a time. And, for what it's worth, make a very large Orc army. The other thing is the One Ring. And the One Ring is actually probably the real hot topic outside of Legacy. This is a four mana legendary artifact and it's very precious, okay? And it's uh, indestructible. When it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, you gain protection from everything until your next turn. Okay, sure, we don't really necessarily need that if we're blinking it. What's really fun is it enters untapped. And uh, it has a tap ability, put a burden counter on the one ring, and then draw a counter, or draw a card for each burden counter on the one ring. It also has an upkeep trigger, lose one life for each burden counter on the one ring. But um, that may or may not come into play. We'll see. Well, the nice thing is that when I'm blinking the one ring with this World Gorger Dragon Animate Dead combo, then I can every single time draw a card. And I'm making mana, so I don't need Orcish Bowmasters on the battlefield right away. I can have the one ring on the battlefield and I can just blink, 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 draw every single time. And then I will eventually draw that Bowmasters and I can win that way. Um, yeah, drawing a counter doesn't quite work like I wanted it to, right? So, Alan, um, Thassa's Oracle is not super great. I would need to draw my entire deck and exactly my entire deck um, and then put Thassa's Oracle in, uh, which, I mean, it would be fine. However, once I'm doing this whole thing, I, I, I can win any way. I want really. And I don't need to entomb a Thassa's Oracle into my graveyard and then at the end of the loop animate dead the Thassa's Oracle. That was how that would work. Um, I can just play with generically good cards that I would want to be casting throughout a game anyway, uh, like Orcish Bowmasters. So, um, no, 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 Alan, that works out. And it actually ends up working out, right? So with the One Ring, I can draw exactly my cards and then I use entomb to, uh, at some point, I can draw an Entomb before I gr draw my Thassa's Oracle, um, but it's not the greatest idea. So, 
The other side plan here is Shieldred and Bowmasters. So Shieldred the Apocalypse, four mana for a four or five legendary creature, Phyrexian Praetor. It has Death Touch. Whenever you draw a card, gain two life. And whenever an opponent draws a card, they lose two life. So both Orcish Bowmasters and Shieldred the Apocalypse punish our opponent for dr drawing cards. Generally, that's a pretty good thing when Brainstorm and Ponder and all of these other cards exist in the format. However, if we're already playing in Tomb to tutor a card into our graveyard, namely the World Gorger Dragon, then if that's not going to be a viable plan for some reason, our opponent has removal, uh, then we can get an Echo of Eons in the battlefield, or into the graveyard, excuse me, and Echo with Bowmasters or Shieldred or both in play. And that will very quickly win a game. So pretty exciting about uh, a little side plan for, uh, for this deck. We have two avenues of attack, either through the graveyard uh, with a World Gorger loop and Animate Dead, or um, this kind of Shieldred Orcish Bowmasters. I can cast Echo of Eons. Uh, drawing cards with the one ring and gaining life with Shieldred works out really nicely. There's a lot of avenues to this. Uh, the other thing that we've thrown in here, this is not my list, by the way. This is uh, Alejandro's list. This is SO63. Um, they uh, tweeted about this a couple of days ago. They were really excited about this uh, potential build, showcasing a lot of the Lord of the Rings cards. And uh, they added an Atraxa Grand Unifier. If we are an Entomb and animate dead deck, then we can just animate dead an Atraxa, and at some point we're just going to be able to fly in the face of anything that our opponent could have. So yes, actually, you know what, Dominique? That's something that I forgot to mention at the very beginning. This deck was brought to you by the Epic Storm YouTube community at, uh, well, 10... 10 Eastern, 9 Central, I released a poll on our YouTube community page and had f a list of four decks. This one, Reanimator, Turbo Smog, and uh, Peer into the Abyss Storm. And y'all voted for what you wanted to see. We actually had quite a few votes, and I was really excited to see the excitement that this kind of generated. If you like that kind of approach, I'll be implementing it for the next couple of streams just to test it all out, but I'm, I'm pretty excited. I think it's going to work out really well. So um, anyway, I, I was mentioning I was mentioning the, the protection that we have with this with this combo plan. We have thought seizes and griefs, and these function really nicely to disrupt our opponent long enough to get this whole combo going. Uh, the other thing that we have is this kind of scam deck of Grief and Animate Dead, make making sure that we can just um, double discard our opponent if we really need to. It's especially good against combo decks. And then we have a bunch of mana acceleration. Lotus Petals, Dark Ritual, Chrome Mox. We have a playset of Ancient Tombs. And then we've got all of our black sources. We're not 100% a black mono black de deck. We still have Echo of Eons that we're wanting to flash back. We're not really ever going to hard cast World Gorger Dragon, so that's not really a thing. We technically can cast Atraxa Grand Unifier, but that's really unlikely. Um, but it's really going to be blue in the main deck. And then we can move into the sideboard where we're looking at addressing problematic permanence that our opponent is going to present us. And usually that's going to be Leyline of the Void. And Serenity is really good at getting rid of Leyline of the Void. It also is really good at getting rid of Chalice um, and well, any, uh, Torpor Orb. Torpor Orb is going to be a bit of a problem for our deck. Um, so yeah, uh, Serenity works out really, really nice. The other thing is that we have defense grids in the sideboard against force of will decks, uh, mind break trap decks, things like that. 
an echoing truth, a single echoing truth to solve our problems with potentially reanimator or chalice of the void or ley line, some extra options there. And then surgical extraction, any of those combo decks that we're really worried about. Um, the nice thing about this is we have a nice sideboard juke, uh, snuff outs for any non-black creatures that we're concerned about. And then we have three Ravenloft Adventurers. So Ravenloft Adventurer is three mana, three and a black for a three, four human rogue assassin. It's a lot of, a lot of types on there. When it enters the battlefield, we take the initiative and it has a bunch of other stuff, but this is a way to introduce the initiative into a game against an opponent who has a handful of graveyard hate and they are not planning for a fair grindy matchup. And we can just take out the animate deads, the dance of the dead, which by the way, is an enchantment aura that functions almost exactly the same as animate dead. Uh, just has a little bit different text. It uh, doesn't, uh, an opponent doesn't, sorry, not an opponent. The creature doesn't untap unless I pay a certain amount of mana. It enters the battlefield tapped, which is not something that we care about. But yeah, so we can just, remove these five cards, maybe a World Gorger Dragon and an Atraxa, and then we've got this kind of sideboard juke into a fair plan with Shieldreds and Orcish Bowmasters in the One Ring and Griefs. We're really doing pretty good stuff right there. So, uh, Dominic, yeah, Serenity is a, yeah, Serenity used to be a vintage staple. It's actually coming back in Legacy quite a bit. Um, for example, Obviously, Reanimator is being uh, is, is a big proponent of this card. We're playing it. Another deck that has played it in the past quite heavily is Cephalid Breakfast. Mostly combo decks, right? So that's the plan. I hope that y'all are excited, and thank you for those of you that did vote on the poll. It'll go live every week, the the morning before a uh, stream on Thursday. So ten. Eastern, 9 Central, 8 Mountain, 7 Pacific, that whole thing, right? So uh, it's very humid. It is very humid in here, and I didn't... It's a little fuzzy. It's a little fuzzy today. Um, but that's fine. My AC should kick on at some point, and we'll get it all taken care of. So let's get started. I am already queued up for a league, and while I'm finding a match. I'm going to tell you how you guys can follow along if you want to rent this deck on Card Hoarder, which is one of our sponsors. It's a fantastic rental service. And let me tell you a little about that. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. Alrighty, we are paired up. This is our round one and we have lost the die roll, unfortunate, but that's okay. 94 in Syracuse, oh, that's pretty rough. Um, now this looks like a hand that I can keep. So this, this has a lot going for it. I can obviously turn one Thoughtseize. I can Thoughtseize myself if I want to Echo eventually, which is probably not what I want to do. I can Entomb. The other thing that I can do is this is a turn to the One Ring, which seems really good. So I'm going to keep this. We're going to see where it goes. Yeah, the humidity was pretty bad today. Luckily, I was inside for most of it, working, um, which is the reason why this stream was a little bit late. I had... Uh, some things that took a little bit more higher priority at work uh, that I needed to get finished. So 15, 20 minutes late, but here we are. Okay, they have a uh, ponder, chose not to shuffle off of a basic island. We'll see how this goes. I think what I want to do is... So I can thought seize my opponent if they let the dark ritual resolve next turn. So what I'm gonna do is entomb in their end step, which is 
oftentimes a good force of will target or some kind of interaction um, if our opponent is concerned about a reanimator, which might free up my Thoughtseize to get another piece of interaction and the one ring can resolve. We'll see. Uh, lose to storm. I'm not playing storm, so that's pretty good. Um, ooh, Besaju who shelters all. So I forgot to entomb because I was too busy just mouthing off. But um, let's start off with a dark ritual. I don't have to worry about wasteland from our opponent. Now they might force this. In which case I'm going to imprint Chrome Mox under the Entomb and Thoughtseize them. But since that didn't happen, I will Thoughtseize them now. Um, okay. Well, 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 well. They've got Cunning Wishes and brainstorms, which I'm not going to touch. I am going to grab this show and tell. Uh, I'm a little surprised they didn't brainstorm. But that's okay. Um, okay, now they certainly can interact with the one ring if they want. Um, okay, and we have protection from everything until next turn. I'm actually going to draw a card right now. If it's a grief, which it wasn't, um, I was going to use it. Or if it was a black card to imprint under the chrome mox, that would also have worked out nicely. Um, only 80. Yeah, that's not bad, Jason. Only 80. Um, yeah, it hit something. It's 82 right now, and it's 730. Uh, let me see what it was like earlier. I was not looking at the weather because honestly that didn't didn't look appealing to me. Um, live popper stream? Uh, that's a good question. I don't play popper, but I'm sure that I could be convinced if you want. Uh, we I have done a donation league on this stream before. If you want to see me play popper, however poorly that would be, I'll do it. Might have some fun. There's only two decks right now. Oh no. Okay, well, maybe not. Interesting. That was not the greatest. I'm not gonna lie. So, we could Echo of Eons right now. Um, so I have, you know, um, Six mana, seven mana, in fact, uh, if I really want to put Echo of Eons in, on the stack. Um, but I think... I think I'm going to wait another turn. I guess I could have um, not played a land out and, and discarded Echo to hand size, but I don't think that that's necessary. Um, we did not mulligan this game, no. We kept it off of the strength of a turn two one ring with some Thoughtseize work and things like that. Calvanic Relay, yeah, that that probably was a fantastic uh, time and popper for a uh, for a Storm fan. Hello, JW Data Spot. Data Spot. There we go. I can talk. Now they're going to show and tell. All right. Well, that's unfortunate. Did they find a uh, an omniscience? They did find an omniscience. Oh well. James, I'm glad you're catching a live one, but this one is dead. Um. Oh well. Okay, um, we're gonna begin sideboarding. I like all of our discard against this opponent, and um, 
I'm not sure if we need to play Atraxa. They're, they're a show and tell deck, but I don't know if our, our show and tell uh, target Atraxa is not going to be nearly as good as theirs is. Um, so this is an Omnitel deck. Uh, Defense Grid is potentially a card that I want. I don't know if I want every single Bowmasters. That seems like a bad card. It actually doesn't do anything other than punish their cantrips, which is fine. I'll probably keep a like one or two in um, for the combo purposes. Um, Shieldred, not bad. Um, so if I do this, I just bring in three defense grids. Now, I know that there's an obvious thing that I'm not talking about, which is surgical extraction. We are a four discard, four, uh, four thought sees, four grief deck. So we can potentially discard our opponent's show and tell and then surgical it. Um, oh, data spot. Yeah, we only need one world gorger. It's just the, we're gonna entomb for it and then animate dead and blink everything. So, I think I might want maybe two surgical extractions. If I want anything, I don't want all of them. Um, maybe it's okay to go down an Echo of Eons. And maybe a Shieldred. But I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure. Maybe maybe we can do this. I know that it's really in poor taste to try to Thoughtseize and then Surgical a show and tell. It's not at its best, but this is Omnitel, so it's a little bit better because they don't really have very many ways to operate outside of show and tell. Well, this was really close. We don't have an Entomb, so we're gonna ship this, but. And this one isn't very good. Uh, oh, it's just the lighting, sorry about that. Um, I'll try to fix that. The lighting has changed in the past little bit, so. Um, We can work on that. Oops, there we go. Mm, desaturate just a skosh. I am gonna mulligan this, sorry. Um, yeah, we want the brand colors for sure. This is as close as we're gonna get. This is a nice Thoughtseize hand. We can, um, I'm gonna keep this. We're gonna put back um, potentially, let's see. We can put back defense grid. That seems, we can put back dark ritual and thought seize. Um, or we could put back defense grid and thought seize. I think that we want the one ring powered out on turn two, just like we did before. Um, so, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so let's put back the Thoughtseize, and, well, we can't do everything. We gotta put back two, Bryant. Um, let's see, I think it's gonna be the defense grid. I think it's gonna be the defense grid. So we can disrupt them on turn one and then put the one ring uh, into play on turn two. Shows you how much Bryant watches the stream. Oh, that's a little unfortunate. All right, well, that kind of uh, is just going to exist there for ever. We didn't bring in an Echoing Truth or uh, any of our Serenities. That's fine. 
Let's see. Should we play around days? We should play around days. Let's be a reasonable player and work around days. Oh. Bluster storm. Well, I'm not going to pay for this. I could, but it's not really going to get me anywhere. Good to know. And then we can turn three this ring. Still accelerate it. Um, yeah, if we draw a world gorger, we can thought seize ourselves for sure. Besage you. I'm not going to counter anything for what it's worth. Um, something that's really fun. Uh, last week, not sure, suspected potentially that an opponent of ours was stream sniping, which, yay, cool, I'm big enough to get stream sniped. That's kind of neat. Um, I have a hand hider. Look at that. My hand is awesome. Look at that. It's fantastic. I just I have a turn one rolled up. I'm pretty excited about that. Spent some time on that, and it looks pretty good, in my opinion. Okay, we've got the one ring, and we're not going to draw yet. Uh, we really can't do anything with the card that we would have drawn. Um, we can draw at the end of their turn and see if we want to entomb or something like that. I also have a, well, it's not a bad hand, but it's not a turn one. So, like, I have two hands that I can readily ready, let, <laughs> readily deploy if necessary. Okay, defense grid? What? That's wild. I'm not really sure what you expected from me. The only instant thing was, I guess, Orcish Bowmasters and Entomb. Um, hmm. Okay, so let's draw a card. Animate Dead. That's pretty close. Oh, I should have yielded to that. That's fine. Another Thoughtseize. That's not great. But let's draw two cards. Dark Rituals. Um, okay. Well, not what we're looking through for, but we are churning through our deck. We just drew three cards for four mana already. We're losing some life, but that's probably not going to matter. Um, I should have uh, some kind of empty hand or whatever. There's a bunch of different things that I can do with it. Uh, it's just a push of a button on my, my stream deck, so I'm kind of fun. Yeah, I don't need to play Grid. Uh, everybody's playing Fair Magic, and we're all good to go. Nobody's going to interact with nobody. Underground Sea. Well, let's draw three cards. Entomb. Excellent. So this is going to get click heavy. I'm not going to play out the Chrome Mox because clicks, but we should have a win here. So, Entomb, get the World Gorger, and we're going to Animate Dead, the World Gorger, come on, there we go, yield to that, yield to that, oh, I don't want to yield to that, oops, because I want to float mana, that's my bad. Attach the aura to a creature. Um, so what I'm going to do is draw cards until I can entomb for... Oh my gosh. I, I need to stop talking. It's going to be Shieldred. I'm going to animate dead a Shieldred and then Echo. There we go. Oh, 
So it's going to be clicks, 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 all the clicks. I don't know which ones I can auto yield to actually. Draw a card, float some mana. Draw some cards, float some mana. <laughs> it's gonna take a little bit. So this is part of the problem with this. Okay. That's not what I wanted, but I wanted the Entomb so that I could put Shieldred in the graveyard. But I think we can win. We'll see. So, Bowmasters. Any target. That's not going to work now. Because Ley Line, right? So, that's fine. Cash Register. Rise Shock. Using those emotes well. Yeah, so it's going to be Shieldred Echo. Um, I need a way to put a creature in my graveyard. Um, oh, wait. Bowmasters can kill itself. Bowmasters can, can kill itself. It's totally fine. Okay. Um, yeah, I needed a way to put a creature in the graveyard, but Bowmasters can just straight up kill itself. So that's totally, totally fine. We're going to just double check that really quick. Nice. That's how we do it. So Bowmasters is going to be the target here to stop the loop. Uh, it can kill itself, that's fine. And then we can Shieldred and Echo. Hmm, look at that. Winning through a Ley Line. So I'm just gonna click all of these randomly. Uh, I'm just putting all of these on the stack. This is me gaining life and my opponent gaining, uh, losing life. Uh, Always yield, always yield. There we go. Look at that. Okay, got there eventually. A uh, little bit click intensive, and we had the win actually a little bit earlier, but that's fine. We won through Leyline of Sanctity. That's pretty cool. I really appreciate that the deck decided to showcase some of the power um, very early on. So. Echoing Truth is going to be good here. I don't think that we need um, anything else because once we actually have the loop going, um, we can just draw until we hit the Echoing Truth or we can do the whole Shieldred Echo thing. Um, yeah, yeah, I can, I can side out Grid. I think that I can side out one Grid. I think that they're still, you know, we saw Fluster Storms, we saw Force of Wills. If they're gonna play the grids themselves, that's fantastic, but I I want to make sure that we have some in, um, just in case they don't do that. We've got all of our discard, we've got two surgical extractions, just in case, and yeah. That was pretty fun. Okay. It's a lot easier to do this in paper. You can be like, hey, I present a loop. 
I'm going to make a lot of mana, and then I'm going to draw an, a predetermined amount of cards, and you just kind of grab from the top of the deck, and you're like, okay, I've got a lot of mana. I'm going to do this thing. Uh, okay, this is not really a capable hand. Obviously, it's a Bowmasters, but that doesn't do much uh, against our opponent. Uh, we kept in two just for the combo potential, um, so I'm going to mulligan this. This is good. We are missing out on some mana. We have a combo, but nothing to actually blink yet. Is this keepable? I need mana, but I have the ability to Thoughtseize. I can just bin another Animate Dead. I'm on the draw. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to keep this. I don't know if this is terribly good. Um, so, uh, Jason, we do need to blink something. Just forever animate dead, world gorger dragoning doesn't do anything other than give us a bunch of mana. Well, that's unfortunate. And we don't have anything to do with that mana um, until we we start blinking something or be able to animate dead something else in our graveyard right so we'll see okay burden catacombs another land it's fantastic we are getting close so we're going to entomb uh dark rit land off the top that does it yeah so we're gonna entomb at the end of their turn um, and they're not going to have anything. They kept a turn a turn zero ley line and did nothing else, right? They just uh, shuffle their ponder. Their preordain is going to bottom both cards and draw random, and it's going to be totally fine. Yeah, one top, one bottom. Okay, that's fine. Now this could eat a fluster storm or some kind of counter magic. Yeah, okay, fluster storm. So maybe I should have thought about um, entombing before they got to untap. I don't know. Surgical. Um, let's just play out the defense grid. Unfortunately, I can't thought seize here because of this ley line, but we are, we do have an echoing truth. Um, see if our opponent is gonna do anything with this defense grid, it just resolved. Okay, we're gonna let them go to their turn. Now, if they show and tell, I could put in the one ring. It's a thing I can do. Um, you know, a lot of people uh, say if two people are wastelanding each other in the game, one of them is wrong. Maybe the same thing with defense grid. If both of us are, uh, well, that was good. So they have three mana up. This is, the one ring is pretty precious at this point. Nope, I mean, absolutely pun intended. I totally did that on purpose, but I'm not really comfortable just throwing it out into the world with uh, force of will represented through defense grid um, so I'm gonna just wait you would cast it okay yeah so I can check with surgical um, Let's get um, Ponder out of the way or Fluster Storm. I think it's gonna be Ponder. This is match number one. Mm -hmm. Shaky owns. So they have Force and Fluster. Oh well. They have a Cunning Wish. So let's get that Ponder out and then these Ponders. And before I do anything else, we have Emrakul, Show and Tell, Omniscience. They have a surgical of their own. 
Um, okay, so we're just going to... Does anybody know if um, surgical revealed zones... You know what? I'm not going to chance it. I'm just going to take that, bring it over here, just in case. Um, they might be. You know what I have for that? I got something for that. Obviously, I'm not playing the Epic Storm, but, you know, yeah. uh, not tapping totally makes sense. Um, but I can show off my hand hider. Okay, our opponent. So it does actually show, by the way, I, I didn't say that out loud. Mystic Sanctuary, they get a preordain, they get a preordain. Oh, yeah, you want to see the hand hider? There's two of them. There's a uh, good hand. Turn one Adnaz hand, I should say. Um, and this is turn one with backup, absolutely. And then the other, and day's backup. And then this one is just like a generically good hand. So, got a couple different options, just in case. And we've drawn a bunch of Thoughtseizes for someone that can't cast a Thoughtseize targeting my opponent. They've drawn their Preordain, and um, we'll see. Oh, well, drive safe, Jason. I'll catch you around. Um, top one, top bottom the other, kept the impulse. They're impulsing, and they get to put something in their hand. They're still holding up force of will. Now we have a pain free source in our ancient tomb, if that becomes a thing we need. But um, what I would like is to not have to worry about this force of will. And if I draw another actionable card, then I can potentially force the action on the one ring and then do like entomb or something like that. Uh, actually probably be entomb and then the one ring, but we'll see. It depends on how much mana they are holding open and right now it's a lot. It's a lot. Okay. Oh, we do know that this Besaju is gone. Okay. So we know three of the four cards, but they just brainstorm, so maybe not Chromox. Well, I'm going to play this out. <laughs> yeah, uh, Bryant, I'll, I'll chat with you here on stream. I was going to talk to you about it eventually, but like I just eventually just cut out each of the cards from different screenshots that I had and pasted them onto a blank screenshot of like the hand that I've got. Um, no, uh, data spot, I'm holding it because they have a force of will in hand and uh, they, while indestructible, this can be countered. So, not at its best at the moment. Um, <clears throat> I am going to keep playing out lands. If I have, if I draw a one ring, uh, another one, then I can double spell, uh, double threat. So we'll see. Yeah, opponent's win condition is the timeout. That's for sure. And I really haven't just, I haven't been uh, tapping zero for my turns or anything like that, which is unfortunate. <clears throat> Cunning wish. Okay. Uncounterable. I wonder what instant they have. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty big deficit. I was... The World Gorger Dragon loop does take a lot of time to execute. Okay. 
And unfortunately, they're going to end of turn intuition for three show and tells. And oh, they didn't do that. I guess they can just do it now. It doesn't matter. I'm not sure why they are not just intuitioning, but you know what? More cards. They've got all of the mana in the world. They can do whatever they want. Hmm. Interesting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's fine. They, they took out many of their waking conditions, that's for sure. Place the Misty. Fetches. Oh boy, we're doing something here. Don't know if it's more cantrip, but cantripping and they just wanted to thin their deck out, but all right, we're doing stuff. They can target me. I would, uh, would like an in. Okay, there's the Omniscience. They get one of them. They have show and tell, omniscience. I don't know why they think that this is gonna be countered, but might as well. Their life is not uh, important to them. I'll put in the one ring. They have an omniscience, big surprise. And cunning wish. Okay, they have another one and they get something that's going to kill me. Firemind's Foresight, we're gonna call it good. We have lost this one. So, unfortunate end. We did get to showcase some of the really cool power of this deck by winning through a Ley Line of Sanctity, um, but that is the game, that's the match. So, not bad. We'll queue right back in for match number two. And in the meantime, I'll tell you a little bit about how you can support us by becoming a YouTube member. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsroom.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. And it is indeed time to combo. Um, we are waiting for our opponent to make their mulligan de decisions, but um, like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can support us and all of it's really appreciated. It's uh, really, really nice to see all of the support. Like, I had a poll for this and there was a couple hundred people that decided to make decisions about what I was going to play today. So that was kind of, a, that was kind of fun. Um, I, oh, by the way, data spot, I don't draw cards. Uh, like, oh man, if I only drew this card. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, I don't, I don't look at the top of the deck. It's just, nope. There's only sadness there. Okay. So this is either painter or um, eight cast potentially something like that. I'm going to slam the one ring and I'm going to uh, put an animate dead under this and then I can dark ritual the one ring. It'll give me five mana, seven mana. I could one ring and orcish bowmasters. Or I could just imprint the Dark Ritual and not get too greedy. Let's do that. Let's leave our options open. See what our opponent has to say about the One Ring. Oh, oh okay. I could have technically drawn with that, but there was uh, nothing I could have gotten. Uh, with here, though, I should actually draw. I am a grief gamer, but nope. Okay.
Mm. Badlands. This looks like Painter. Yep. Okay. It is Painter. They're painting the world black. Well, unfortunately, that doesn't really... Ooh, that looks good. Oh, that looks nice. Okay. Big fan of that one. Unfortunately... Painter Servant is pretty good against Orcish Bowmasters. And this is oof, good against us. Um, so I can, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. I can entomb Orcish Bow, I can Orcish Bowmasters entomb an Echo of Eons and flash back the Echo of Eons. Let's do that. That seems like exactly the right thing to do. Uh, let's deal them one, or the painter servant one, because we will be able to do more of that in a little bit. Uh, retro would look better, like this lotus petal, fantastic. Um, now we can entomb, and the echo of eons, and then flash it back immediately before they have priority to do anything with the soul guide lantern and they could have pyroblast i understand that uh but they don't okay so let's destroy painter and that's enough to destroy painter and then deal a bunch of damage to them Um, ugh, cat hair everywhere. I should just, I should just auto yield. This is just a lot easier. Um, okay, now what can I do? I can play my lotus petals and I can thought seize and grief them. Let's grief them, see if I want to continue doing things. Get rid of a land. Agadim's Awakening is a really good addition if you're playing Grief. It is, if you don't need to hit land drops, then it's a great way to pitch to Grief. So they have Double Painter and an Urza Saga and a Lightning Bolt. So if I take this Lightning Bolt, uh, no, I should just take both Painters. So let's take the Painter Servant and then Lotus Petal, Thoughtseize, the other Painter out. That way there's no way to lose at this point. I don't think. Oops. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now we have nine power on the board. Excuse me. Uh, nine power on the board. Their Urza Saga is going to pop, but it's not going to make a construct. Um, they have a lightning bolt for my bowmaster, but that's not that big of a deal. They could. Okay, so they get a grindstone. So they could fable here uh, off of another Urza Saga and hope to draw a painter. Uh, they could get. Uh, or hope to draw a, a welder even that also would work but yeah i'm not i'm not too uh, too upset with this pretty excited so there's the fable okay oh and the saga so we know everything but their draw step uh joe yeah we got to echo we got to echo our opponent so entomb echo of eons felt pretty good Auto yield to that, lose two life, draw a card. So that is another echo. That will very quickly 
destroy our opponent. Um, they have a lightning bolt though, so that's not at its greatest. Oh, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's the exact same math that we did last turn. Three mana for the flashback of Echo of Eons, two mana for the Orcish Bowmasters, one mana for the Entomb. Uh, let's go to combat. I shouldn't have done that. Uh, they're less incentivized to block in this case, though, which they're not, which means that I can uh, kill them, actually. So that was actually the, the correct choice. Nice. Because they're exactly at seven. Let's not show them... That I play basics. Hey, Sir Noble. Hello. Yeah, throw them bows. Uh, here we go. They don't have double bolt probably they could i don't know we have one unknown but yeah they are dead nice 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 uh yes sir michael noble in the chat and phoenix this deck is really sick i like this a lot so um against our opponent who is playing painter We've seen Soul Guide Lanterns, Graveyard Hate is going to exist. They also could be playing Leyline of the Void. Serenities. They automatically chose black when they saw that we were playing black because Snuff Out is turned off if their painter is a black creature. I'm not really excited about bringing in Snuff Out. Um... I might be playing Surgicals. I don't know. Surgicals, potential. Echoing Truth, potentially. So we've got these seven cards. Um, they're a combo deck. I, I think Atraxa is not bad, but it could be better. Echo won the game. Having two Echoes won the game. Um, Shieldred. Bowmasters is not at its greatest because like we talked about, they don't actually kill anything on the opposing side. Um, and Shieldred, eh. I mean, like if our opponent chooses to draw with Fable of the Mirror Breaker, then it'll deal two damage and amass two but they don't have to uh, discard any cards or draw any cards at all, so. And then what if I want Echoing Truth and two Surgicals? Is it gonna be two Shieldreds and an Echo of Eons? So four card draw Punishers. Um, we are up a game, Jason. Four card draw punishers, and yeah. All right. Uh, Phoenix, if Daniel is playing next week, uh, then you should play this and put him in the dirt. Uh, all right. So we're up a game against uh, Red Black Painter, which I'm not sure why they're playing black other than Bowmasters um, in... Uh, an online game because the cards that would make sense for them to be playing black are actually just in paper only. All right, I am going to keep this very disruptive hand. Uh, Serenity's not bad. We have the Entomb, so part of the combo already here, and we can just discard our way to victory potentially. We'll see. This is kind of like uh, we're playing control right now uh, in this 
between the two of us, I'm playing the control role based on this hand. I'm not upset about. We'll see how that goes. I do like the fact that I have Serenity to deal with any Urza sagas um, that pop up. So, we'll see. Um, basic Mountain, Goblin, Welder. Well, that makes my discard a little bit worse. And, okay, we've drawn the white source naturally. So they can t potentially play Magus of the Moon. Um, we don't have brainstorms. So let's just grab a Swamp, my favorite art. And Thoughtseize them. Soul Guide Lantern, Surgical Extraction, two Fable of the Mirror Breakers, if I grab, so Surgical and Soul Guide are both Graveyard Hate that kind of get us, and I could discard both of them. However, they have a turn two Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which will give them a Goblin, which will be attacking and creating a treasure, which they can then weld back the Soul Guide Lantern whenever they want. I am moderately tempted to uh, say, take a surgical extraction, and then they won't be playing Soul Guide Lantern on their next turn because they'll be playing Ancient Tomb Fable instead. But I'm not a hundred percent sure about that. I have the Serenity for the Soul Guide Lantern anyway. Um, and then surgical isn't the greatest against me, but like double fable. Um, I would take fable if it was just one. As it is, I think that I'm going to be taking... Uh, hey, Varlis. Yeah, absolutely. Demo democracy works. We voted for this absolute pile of Lord of the Rings goodness, and here we are. I'm going to take the surgical. I've waited and waffled on that so much. It was not necessary. Um, okay, Ancient Tomb, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, just like we drew it up. So, I wonder if they'll play the next one as well. Who knows? Serenity will destroy both Fables. Or when it flips, it flips to an enchantment creature, so it'll it'll destroy the Goblin Shaman as well. Kiki jiki. Maybe this wasn't a great keep. I don't know. Farless having a pretty good night. Started a little bit late, but uh, and we're down a match. But actually, it's been a lot of fun. This this deck is quite fun. Okay, now I'm going to run out the serenity that seems like the best option so they discarded the fable interesting oh because they had another one interesting well this serenity is gonna be decent Not the most amazing, but cleaning up a saga, the lantern, treasure tokens, both fables. Um, can't say that it's not nothing. Now, they have one card in hand, but I'm going to wait to hardcast a grief because I have the fourth land now. Hardcasting the grief is going to be my out to victory now. So. Doesn't matter what they do, they can make all of the Saga tokens that they want. They're all going to be eaten for dinner. So, we'll see what our opponent does. They're probably going to be digging uh, pretty strongly with the Fables, I would imagine. Um, I don't know. Yep, discarding two artifacts, sure. 
And they have two cards in hand. Uh, saga tokens are artifacts. Serenity deals with artifacts and enchantments, destroying them both. Sauron's or Sauron, Saruman's Horde? Oh, that's a really good question. We can actually take a look at it in the art, see if they're gonna be Orokai or actual orcs. If they're orcs, then we're gonna go with Sauron, and if they're Urukai, then we can go with Saruman. But we'll see, I don't know. End step, Serenity, everything is gone, okay. Surgical extraction. Okay. That will work out nicely with this goblin welder that is kind of annoying. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? Actually, I sideboarded out some orcish bowmasters, so we can take a look. Uh, survey says those look like orcs to me. Like those bows, and they're a little bit shorter and and stouter. Um, I'm gonna go with orcs, not urukai. So they're going to be uh, Sauron's army, not Saruman's army. At least that's my vote. Okay, so we discarded this grindstone. Not bad. Um, they have a Great Furnace and a Mox Opal, so both of those cards are gone. I'm going to block one of these bad boys. Not 100% liking my position here. Not at all. Oh. That's kind of annoying. Okay. So, um, we have the option of surgicaling something that our opponent targets and paying for the thorn, which I think we're still gonna do. We can hold it up. This grief is just gonna be a creature on the battlefield. Um, unfortunately, it's not really gonna do much. Our opponent doesn't have a hand. They did draw that thorn, which isn't too bad. Um, luckily, we drew that land so that we can actually pay for surgical. but you can only do that when they activate their welder. Okay, so they did just do that. So is it gonna be Soul Guide Lantern or Grindstone? I think it's gonna be the Grindstone. So we'll see. I don't need to go through... Oh, well, I only have two of them now. I guess Urza Saga functions really well. But they do have Magus of the Moon. They have two Mind Break Traps. That's good to know about. A couple of Lightning Bolts. A couple of Blasts. Okay. They're all gone. And they get a Soul Guide Lantern. data spot. The, you saying that the full art and the, the regular art are going to be different? Orcs versus Orokai? I don't know. Uh, WGD? I'm not familiar. At least with the acronym. Might know it when you spell it out. Um, Oh, World Gorger Dragon. There we go. Um, kind of. We have a split of just being good with Orcish Bowmasters and Shieldred the Apocalypse, and then we have a pretty good um, 
we have a pretty good world gorger dragon like we have the four in tombs we've got the five animate dead effects um so spirit squad hello welcome okay our opponent is just drawing a bunch of cards um and eating our graveyard slowly but surely embrace volatility i did it's essentially just me being lazy and putting it in a clip and not doing anything with it because i uh ran out of the door at work and tried to get here as quickly as possible okay i think what we need to do is draw shieldred that's what we really need to do uh take an orkai yeah i'm tall but there's not much going on behind these bones Yeah, Data, you're right. Um, Velveeta mac and cheese. That's fantastic. Okay. Well, this is a pretty quick clock. Um, hmm. Next to you. I don't know. Maybe. Ugh, cat hair everywhere. Okay. I can just... F6. Somehow, I've been clicking through everything. I'm only, like, I'm only a minute behind. Okay, Goblin Engineer gets them something good. Um, mm-hmm. Gets them a thorn. That's not really as important as they might think. Um... But really, the fact that they're bashing in for two a turn is good enough. I would love to draw Shieldred, but we'll see. Um, that's not going to happen. So what I actually should be doing um, is entombing cards that I don't want to draw. That's what I'll do next. An inch shorter. Yeah, that, I mean tall people represent. It's fantastic. The only downside is that you hit your head on things and people have to look up at you. Uh, Single-handedly causing the most neck problems of any anybody else in humanity. It's just us. Anybody over 6'3". Six, 6'3 three. Six, three and over. Okay. So I'm going to entomb now because is going to cost more. And I don't want to pay more. What is bad? Surgical extraction is bad. Surgical extraction is very bad. And then we can also entomb for something else. Obviously they have the Soul Guide Lantern, so I'm not going to Entomb for a World Gorger Dragon because um, they just have the Engineer and can go get something that would be problematic. I guess um, what's another bad one? Chromebox. Doesn't matter. Alright. Uh, so I could put in an echo and uh, I could put both echoes in but the fact that they oh they're attacking okay well I guess they were doing this before combat so I was pretty much forced to do something but all right we'll see what happens and that's exactly the right draw to kill myself there we go okay and we're gonna go to game three and do we need to change anything? I don't know if surgical extraction is really the best, but I wanted Shieldred the entire time. Let's just take the surgicals out. Keep the Shieldreds in and see what happens. I don't know. All right, let's play first. 
Um, no, no thank you. A lot of mana, do nothing. This, however, is playable. And keep this. Put the one ring on the bottom. Now, I just need something to blink indefinitely. Now, the one ring is exactly that, but I don't have enough mana to do that yet. Oops, clicked one more time than I needed to. Um, I don't have enough mana to do all of the one ring blinking that I want, but we are so close. I just need mana and them to not have a soul guide lantern. Um, we could scam the combo deck, but I kind of thought that, oh, should we scam the combo deck? I, I do think that their fair game is much better. I think we, sh we showed that our fair game isn't worth playing. So, uh, see, this is tr the trouble. I want to play this as a land. Um, I'm going to play it as a land. And I don't want to play fair against this opponent. I don't think that that's going to work out very well. If I did think that it was going to work out, then I could play the scam, and I probably would have just taken the combo out in favor of Ravenloft Adventurer, um, introduce some initiative into the matchup, but probably not it. Pithing Needle. Well, that's going to name the One Ring. No, they haven't even seen the One Ring yet. Okay, well, that's fine. Did they see it in game one? They might have seen it in game one. Entomb. Not bad. That's going to be a pitch for grief. Um... what isn't bugged anymore what was bugged oh wow okay so they've got the combo lined up and a bunch of answers for our stuff um let's take painter servant and grindstone or hmm, if we take grindstone and lightning bolt so lightning bolt now and then grindstone they could still painter paint it blue blast our grief okay so um this might be just like Grindstone, Painter Grindstone, and then we can Echo eventually. Yeah. I'm going to take both. Lightning Bolt, that's fine by me. I take Painter. And I'm not going to play out the Lotus Petal for them to Mind Break. Not that they would, but it is kind of important to our plan here, so. <clears throat> Goblin Engineer was pretty good. Well, I'm Rexian Dragon Engine. Okay. So they have card advantage coming up. Unfortunately, our card advantage isn't a thing. Although, we can prevent them. Oh no, they have the Great Furnace. Ah. Yeah. Okay. That's unfortunate. Um, so we can 
Entomb for... Uh, I should have played the Lotus Petal out last turn. Oops. Well, we can't play around Mind Break Trap. And Red Elemental Blast. So, doesn't matter. Um... Grindstone. They have drawn particularly well. Is this at instant speed? This is at instant speed. Hmm. I don't know what we can draw here. They get rid of the pithy needle, which they did. Um, so they are holding up the red elemental blast, which means that Echo is not the greatest. Um, that's fine. Now I can Echo. Interesting. Okay. My left eye is doing better? Uh, okay. Yeah, I guess we can, <laughs> I guess we can echo. Oh, it's like they... Okay, here we go. Echo it is. What can I do here? I have three mana. Echoing Truth will get me around a loss. And then I can Animate Dead, not Animate Dead, I can Grief Pitching Animate Dead just to make sure that they're not gonna do anything funny. And unfortunately, can't pitch anything because unlike any other game that they've played, uh, they didn't name black. Okay. Grindstone, Lotus Petal, Mind Break Trap. Well, let's take the Grindstone. We need to get them to activate grindstone, which they probably will do in my upkeep if they're a good magic player. Um, so we will echoing truth the... Oh, that's what you're saying. Well, yeah, I could have echoing truth something and then griefed it out of their hand, but we didn't know what their hand was, so I don't think that that was necessary. Lotus Petal, City of Traders. Okay. Painter's Servant. That's exactly the wrong card. <laughs> they drew, oh wait, no, Echoing Truth. No, it doesn't matter. We have exactly the right card to deal with this. Wow. Okay, never mind. Okay, now they're going to activate Grindstone, and we are going to Echoing Truth, the Painter Servant, uh, which is great. Oh no, do they have a blast? Oh no, they're just, they're just using the... That's brilliant. You know, the lines for paint, the, ugh. Hold on. I'm letting my opponent know that that was awesome. So they fizzled the spell by sacrificing the the painter servant that I was targeting with Echoing Truth, 
and then this painter servant that's still on the battlefield will allow their grindstone to kill me out. Um, really cool lines that does put us at 0-2, which is a little unfortunate, but that was pretty sick. I don't know, I'm kind of lie. Um, that's just fine. Uh, okay, so we're going to queue into round number three. And while we're doing all of this, I'm going to run a little bit of an ad to tell you about how you can become uh, an awesome person by supporting some of the writing that we do at theepicstorm.com. Want early access to articles at theepicstorm.com? Become a member of our Patreon to get articles seven days early on top of other sweet benefits and help us pay our website team. You can sign up at patreon.com slash theepicstorm. All righty. And that was nice and quick. Um... Let me just make sure that that's off. Cool. Um, if you... Oh, okay. Whoops. Didn't want to do that twice. But let's take a look at this deck list and talk about what has been working, what hasn't been working, or we can just get queued up into our third opponent as soon as possible. So we are up against Man Child, which is a choice for a username, but we won the die roll, which is great. And, oh boy, we have a turn to the one ring, um, backed up by grief if we want to pitch our Atraxa. I'm going to keep this. And I'm going to start on... Urborg, I think. No, it's going to be Ancient Tomb. It's going to be the Ancient Tomb. That's the actual way to do this so that we don't have to um, pitch anything to the Chrome Mox. This is the Gorger Bowmaster deck. Yes, Ek. Um, we, you, the people, voted that this was going to be what I played tonight. So... Kind of fun. Yeah, I, I know a Zachary Smith in person. Uh, we used to play at Stormbrew Games. Are you that Zachary? I don't know. Um, yeah, Traxa is pretty good. Doesn't pitch to Fury. Is the card that you're thinking of? Um, Elvish Reclaimer. Okay, Fiend Artisan. So this is um, Cradle Control, likely. We'll see how that goes. All right, so we don't actually have to um, pitch anything to Grief. This is going to be a lot of damage. That's fine. We gain protection from everything. Um... Yeah, there's a lot of Zacks, and there's a lot of Smiths, so it's bound to happen at some point, right? Okay. Well, I'm going to... Grief. Pitching Grief. You know, I actually had an interesting interaction. I was playing this list last night. Okay. Snuff Out doesn't do anything. Fiend Artisan is kind of tough. Um... Let's grab this Fiend Artisan, because that's going to get, that can get a Collector Oof, which I don't really want to deal with. Uh, Atraxa is their natural order target, and it's just fine being stuck in their hand for now. Um, okay. So, let's see what our opponent does. This Urborg is nice because it turns our really, really painful mana base into not that bad. Um, which I appreciate. I think the best draw that we have is Shieldred. We'll see. Oh. Okay. Now I know who you are. Uh, okay. Let's draw a card. 
figure out what happens. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Um, I have three cards that I want to be in my graveyard, which is interesting because the way that I can put them in my graveyard is to keep them in my hand and then move to discard on my next turn. Um, do I do that in lieu of playing a land? Yeah, I think so. It's going to be a little weird, but we're going to make it work. And we can do it in uh, spurts, I suppose, where we can discard a uh, couple of cards that we don't really care about as much. Maybe the Atraxa and the Echo of Eons. Um, because they can very clearly tutor up a bajuka bog with what they what they've got going on here. Uh, they drew a fiend artisan. Okay. Well, I would like to not lose to collector oof, but that may not happen. Okay. So we've drawn a lot of cards. We're losing a lot of life. And our draw for turn is, drum roll, something, some card that our opponent will eventually let us see. Thoughtseize, okay. Well, that is a good way to put something in our hand in our graveyard. So draw three cards, see what happens. And that is gonna be the ball game. Well, let's actually play this Urborg as our land, which is going to allow us to tap all of these ancient tombs for mana. Um, so yes, this is a resource to be exploited for sure. Let's Thoughtseize ourselves. And we're going to put this World Gorger Dragon. Um, yeah, that is, that is a, I am appropriating sports culture here. Let's get this World Gorger Dragon. We even have a grief. Um, oh, wait, they have a snuff out. Oh, that's really annoying. Oh, they also have endurance. Yeah, you know what, some, uh, I was just realizing that they had snuff out, but they also had endurance, so didn't really matter at all. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So we can't even, uh, so their last card is snuff out. We can't even hard cast an echo. We're really close. One, two, three, four, five. We were missing a color source. Um, <clears throat> so this is three, four, five. Let's see what happens. Uh, I can't, I can't, I don't have the mana. I, I don't have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this is going to be a collector oof. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I, I need six mana for Echo. I, I did, I've already played a land. Okay, I was just making sure that I was not missing something really obvious and it was gonna really come back to bite me, but okay. Obviously the collector oof is going to be a problem. We go to eight and then we lose three, go to five. Um, we'll see what happens. And we can echo, um, and not 
lose life with the ancient tomb. Although that's potentially not necessary. Oh, okay. You can also echo that way. Um, <clears throat> yeah, let's do it that way. Um, let's actually imprint the other echo. And I think I'm going to need to imprint... Uh, wait a second. Can I hard cast a Traxa here? Is that something that I can do? Blue. White. Green. Uh, oh, oof. Yeah, oof is existing. That's right. Mm-hmm. Just totally forgot about oof. That's all right. I was too busy counting mana and almost excited about things. Um, which means I actually can't make blue for anything, which means I'm just dead. Okay. <clears throat> that was fun. Should have realized that as soon as the turn started, but that's just kind of how it went. Um, okay, we can, we can have a snuff out and echoing truth kind of a game. Um, hmm. The endurances are turned off by defense grid, but I don't think that that's a game that we want to be playing. Orcish Bowmaster seems pretty good here. Shieldred's less good. Maybe the One Ring is less good as well. Atraxa seems like a good way to win here. We can play the Atraxa game. Um, maybe, maybe World Gorger is just not it. Maybe we do the World Gorger Dragon instead. Oof, indeed. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Brian. Um, so I would not want Dance of the Dead. So if those three are out. Then I still have the ability to Shieldred and Echo, which makes Entomb still pretty good. Atraxa is a good attractive animate dead target. We've got Snuff Out and and uh, Echoing Truth to deal with the Collector Oof. We're still playing One Rings, but shaving on them because of the Oof. Mm, I think I like this. Yeah, no need for Surgical, no need for Ravenloft Adventurer. They're going to have more creatures than I do, so trying to keep a hold of the initiative is not great um dance can um but i would have to pay mana to untap it which is not the worst thing in the world but since we were shaving on the world gorger combo i kind of thought maybe dance is not the worst or is not the greatest card okay so here we've got um Turn one Orcish Bowmasters. Uh, I'm going to keep this hand. I can Thought Seize. I can also technically Thought Seize myself and then Animate Dead, but that doesn't seem great. I'm going to actually just play a little bit of a fair game and imprint the Animate Dead to the Chromox. And we have a basic swamp for the snuff out so I don't know if they're playing wasteland as a, a potential tutor target for their elvish reclaimers but that's not going to happen it does draw cards playing towards me discarding the one of in their hand um, is probably not where I want to be ignoble hierarch well I like your ramp I want to see it in the graveyard I'm assuming that this is something that they have planned on dying. I hold up two mana in a black deck. Big surprise that there's an orc involved here. Um, but we'll see what happens. Oh, that happened. That was potentially one of the better cards I could draw. So we're going to get in for our two. And then we're going to 
cast a turn to Shieldred. Big fan of this. Now we just need to be able to echo somehow. Another ignoble hierarch and a dryad arbor. Okay, so I'm not attacking with my bowmaster now. I guess I could. Um, funnily enough, I could Ancient Tomb hardcast a snuff out, but eh, let's thought seize them really quick before doing anything else. Making other decisions is not necessary until we have better information. Oh, okay. Our opponent has had enough. And we're going to game three. I like opponents conceding to Thoughtseize. That should happen more often. And obviously our deck is perfect. We can think about Dance of the Dead. So I didn't talk about this in the deck deck, but um, this is Enchant Creature in a graveyard, whereas Animate Dead is... Uh, oh, Animate is in a graveyard. Oh, okay. For some reason I thought that that was... Our graveyard. Well, that's even less likely for me to care about it. Um, although I guess it does make our our attracts a bigger, but it has death touch, so it doesn't matter. Okay, cool. Yeah, Dance of the Dead stays in our graveyard or in our sideboard. Excuse me. Aaron, yeah, this is a little bit of a spicy list. We are playing with a bunch of Lord of the Rings cards. It's very, very thematic. Um, we are fighting for control of the One Ring, and it's great. Um, just a bunch of fun. I've been having fun. I haven't been doing well, but I've been having fun. And this is a double Bowmaster hand. I am definitely keeping this one. We can do the exact same thing, pitching the Animate Dead to play a Bowmaster on turn one. Uh, grief as an eventuality doesn't seem bad to me. If this is a Otsis, that's fine. I've got another Bowmaster, which is probably the card that they want to get rid of. Um, but they could get rid of Grief. We could play the scam game. Grief, animate dead, Grief, discard their hand. Um, they have six cards, or they mulligan to six. So they have four cards now. I could take that down to two. Eh, depends on what they do. Really all, all's up to them. <clears throat> animate dead, wow, okay. Dark Ritual? Huh, that's okay. That's okay, too. So, making a decision, I'm going to imprint the grief to... Uh, ooh, well, hold up. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be the grief. It's just fine. So we can Orcish Bowmasters. They might have a Collector Oof just in their opener, and that turns the Chrome Mox and the One Ring off, but that's fine. I have land two for these Bowmasters to start working their way through. They have a Cradle. That's not what they want to see. Okay, and that's not what I want to see. One twos in a world where one ones are not as good as they used to be. Not bad. I wish I could double this up, but it's not gonna happen. Um, yeah, Cradle can't cast Oof, I'm all right with that. Should I grief them? My Bowmasters are not at their best. And if they have an oof but couldn't cast it because of these reclaimers, 
um, I can grief them and then leave myself open to actually drawing with the one ring. I'm not upset at that. Yeah, these bowmasters aren't doing, they're, they're not pulling their weight right now. So, grief it is. Green Sun Zenith. Look at that. Alrighty then. They have an Orcish Bowmasters of their own, but we get rid of their Collector Roof. Or their route to Collector Roof, I suppose. Okay. Well, they have a Bowmasters and they're drawing an unknown card. We'll see what it is. They have some amount of mana. Tapping Cradle for two. The nice thing is that they have to commit to the Bowmasters and waste the Cradle mana. Um, they could get Dryad Arbor, but then they lose the black. It, they're a little constrained on mana. So I'm pretty okay with this. Um, in fact, I'm very okay with this for what it's worth. Animate death. That's not bad. Um, I know one of the cards in their hand is Orcish Bowmasters which can just kill my Bowmasters. Um, but then I'd have a 2-2 with Menace. Uh, I'm content to wait just a little bit. Um, they can flash this Bowmasters in at the end of turn and get rid of mine. Th that was gonna happen anyway. Um, they obviously didn't draw a Green Sun Zenith. I think that they would have used it. So, I'm okay with this. Okay, this cradle is large. They've got a bunch of mana. Force of Vigor. Sure. Spend four mana to get rid of my Chrome box. Mm, methinks their hand isn't super great. Well, they don't have a hand, actually. But they can attack for three. Uh, Trent, yeah, I know. Right? Our opponent is doing the best that they can do, which is not bad. They're smashing in for us uh, for a solid amount of damage here. Um... Dark Ritual, but not bad. We would have had the One Ring. I don't think animating Bowmasters is the play, or not, animating uh, Grief is the play here. It would just serve to block, and it wouldn't do that very well. They're attacking for six. I would go down to 11, nine, I don't know. Maybe I need to, to give myself enough time. I'm not gonna do it. If I just draw an Entomb, I would feel really silly. So we can still put a Traxa on the battlefield. Five mana, six mana. Seven mana for our opponent available, whatever they do with it. Um, ooh. That was all gone. What are they doing? Green Sun Zenith for four. What do they have for four? Grist is three. Endurance is three. Uh, four. I'm not sure what they have for four. Okay. Just overpaid. That's fine, too.
They've got... Okay, we are going to trade orc armies, that's for sure. So... Entomb? Lotus Petal. Well, that will get me the one ring. But with Orcish Bowmasters, that also means that I am losing life at a rate I'm not super excited about. However, if I were, I, I mean, the last point of life is the one that matters, right? And this has the option of drawing into an Entomb over the next turn or so. Uh, it has to be over the next turn or so. So, oh, I do get indestructible. It's not indestructible. I get protection from everything. So that's, that's a good point. Keep forgetting that line of text. And they're a Thoughtseize deck, but it doesn't matter because we are redundantly protected. It has to deal damage, and it just pings a Reclaimer. That makes sense. Okay. So we are Thoughtseize protected for what it's worth. Um... Let's see what happens. Yeah, another ring. Well, we don't have mana for another ring, but it's not bad. Seven, eight, nine mana. Oh, once upon a time. Okay. Interesting that they chose to... Ah, oh, they found the oof. All right, so we just need... Um, Entomb. And Atraxa. That's not going to do it. Okay. Um, yeah, protection from everything covers discard. Um, yes. So we don't win this game. Which unfortunate. It's a little bit of a poor showing for this deck that I'm actually really excited for. Um, just some awesome cards. Let's take a look at the deck list really quick. Um, like a bunch of really cool cards we're playing. Orcish Bowmasters, the One Ring, World Gorger Dragon is a fun combo, but uh, yeah, it's just not working out very well for us today. That's just fine. We're having some fun. We're, we're experimenting in a space that needs work. So let's queue up another opponent and let me tell you about our awesome token pack if you're blinking world gorger dragon over and over and over again and making a bunch of mana best way to keep track of that mana tokens no dice dice float around and they get bumped and rolled and all this kind of stuff not worth it so let me tell you about it Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. We're still waiting for our opponent, but we will wait just a little bit longer. Uh, let's take a look at this deck list for a little bit while we wait. Um, I really like the, the two avenues that this deck is going through, and they both work with Entomb especially well. Entomb is one of the best can or uh, cantrips uh one of the best tutors of the format that i think is only really used well by reanimator at the moment but in tomb putting something into the graveyard obviously can be a big fatty that you get to reanimate it's probably the best way to go about it but world gorger dragon as a, an option or a traxa if you want to be playing that kind of fair game um or Echo of Eons is two really good avenues to kind of abuse this tutor. Um, I don't know if it's stretching the deck too much one way or another, if it would be better to be such a focused deck. Um, but 
right now it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's obviously not performing terribly well, but um, I don't know uh, if that's the fault of the deck not being able to draw into things. Maybe this needs to be a brainstorm deck and play Force of Wills and a little bit more controlling. No Dark Rituals, no Griefs, no Shield Rids, um, but play Cantrips and Forces. I'm not sure. Um, LED is probably not going to be the ticket here um, because even though we want to cast Echo of Eons, um, we don't really need to worry about uh, making the mana. Um, that's not... Echo is kind of like a side plan if we have the Orcish Bowmasters and Shieldred or Shieldred in play um, and being able to kind of just finish our opponent off like that. Shieldred by itself ends games. Orcish Bowmasters, not so much, but when we are blinking World Gorger Dragon back and forth, it certainly uh, speeds things along. So I think that the big thing about World Gorger Dragon combos is that when you have the loop, you need... Oh, we're going to be queued up into our round right now. So we are on the die roll, but as I was saying, even though we have the loop, oh, turn one shieldred, uh, yes please. Or should we wizard pasta? That's a fantastic name. Huh. Yeah, let's keep this and turn one uh, Thoughtseize backed up by something. Whether it's going to be Shieldred or the One Ring, we can make a decision after our Thoughtseize goes on the stack. And I'll finish my thought about World Gorger Dragon needing a bunch of things to go right later. I can't remember. Our opponent is known for something. Oh, well, I was going to guess wrong. Um, okay. So it's going to be the reanimate, as a matter of fact. And we're going to grab the Shieldred because they need to cast these Faithless Lootings to actually do anything. Um, so let's take the reanimate, slam this Shieldred onto the battlefield. Okay. Um, when we execute the Gorger combo, we need to have a third piece involved. We can't just have Animate Dead and World Gorger Dragon. Um, there needs to be a third piece. And because of that, that, um, I'm gonna turn off auto yields and then yield to these triggers in specifically. Um, here we go. Because of that, this is like a little bit of a more involved combo not something that can happen as quickly, not something that can happen as efficiently, and is very easily disrupted. So, we'll just have to see how it goes. But I think that that's why, at its core, we're not doing as good um, as Reanimator or something like that. Okay. So we're pretty close to being able to cast the one ring and actually start gaining some life as well. We have essentially turned off reanimate as a card that our opponent can play. Oh, they played the Badlands. Um, I'm liking our chances, but this is reanimator and they can really take a swing at you um, pretty quickly. Okay, so they're gonna take the one ring, which is just fine. That is not the card that I really needed at the moment. They are entombing, totally fine. What are they getting? Atraxa, okay. I'm gonna put an Atraxa in, uh, actually, hold up. Should I do that? Um, should I animate? I mean, I can animate whatever I want, right? Um, this is kind of fun, but I am going to go to combat first, at the very least. Take them to four, they're gonna go to two. 
So I have griefs of my own. So I'm going to um, hopefully grab a grief. Okay, that's fine. They didn't want to see the rest of my deck, but oh well. <laughs> Pretty neat. All right, let's go with surgical extractions and echoing truth. And the Bowmasters are pretty bad here. Not gonna lie. Uh, we might want one in. Uh, and I don't want this Atraxa, actually. Because the ability for our opponent to discard us and then reanimate our Atraxa, pretty good. Um, obviously, that can still happen with Shieldred or Grief. They're unlikely to do it with World Gorger Dragon, although it can happen. Um, so yeah, that was pretty weird and weird timing, but we'll take it. Um, all right. Mm, so they could have Leyline of the Void. Reanimator doesn't often play it, but it is known to play every once in a while. Um, I'm not going to respect it. We have the Echoing Truth if we really, really need it, but not going to worry about it. Echo of Eons is technically graveyard hate as well, funnily enough, but this is just perfect. This is the nuts. We're playing our own copy of Reanimator right here, right now. And they're going to put a, a creature in the graveyard for us. I hope they don't have a Lotus Petal. I'm going to eat my words in just a second, but this could be really good for us. Lotus Petal into, a, or they could have Grief or something like that, but we can still get Surgical doing something. Archon of Cruelty. Okay, there's the Lotus Petal. I have a Surgical for your Reanimate. Dark Ritual. Okay. Exhum. I wish I could entomb for something right now. Oh, that would feel so good. What do they got going on in their hand? Uh, animate dead. Okay. And this is the only Archon. That's too bad. So I have to take it. I should have paid a little bit more attention to what their cards were. That's okay. All right, can we find an imprintable? It's not an imprintable card. Okay, so we have to break this up over two turns, which is just fine. Uh, they play the Bloodstained Mire. So we go to our end step, or their end step, excuse me our end step comrades and oh yeah that's right we took out the Atraxa for reasons important reasons but reasons uh why did I get the shieldred it should have been the world gorger dragon that was silly um that was really silly but it's all right we have a shieldred now Yeah, we really should have, we should have gotten the World Gorger Dragon, and then if we kind of split this up over a couple of turns, then we could have just drawn cards with the One Ring. That was, that was really suboptimal. We might get really punished for that, but it's fine. We've got a Shieldred. Flashing back the Faithless Looting, it's fine by me. And the nice thing that hasn't happened yet, oh, that's good, is um, with the One Ring, this actually deals us damage, but when we draw, we are gaining life, which is fun. Um, I'm not going to draw yet. Um, we have a friend coming around. He is fluffy and always curious. 
I need to get a cat cam at some point. Okay, so they're gonna go to eight. Oh, they're just gonna concede. Okay, cool. They drew their card and that was it. Uh, put it on the board. We have beaten Reanimator because we can reanimate their creatures just as well as they can, apparently. Um, neat. So we are not gonna O5 a league. That's fantastic. Uh, you know what, one second. My cat is getting into something. I'll be here, one second. Okay. He's doing just fine. It's all good. So while we're waiting on our opponent, there's so much hair, there's so much hair. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about how you can engage with the content that you are apparently enjoying because you're sticking around. So pay attention and uh, do all the like, commenting and subscribing stuff. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. And we are ready for our last round. We are on the die. Uh, we won the die roll. We're on the play. And... Hmm... This is a one lander that has Thoughtseize and a Lotus Petal for Orcish Bowmasters. Really clunky. Um, I'm gonna mulligan this one. We have Dark Ritual in our deck. Let's kind of play to that out. This is worse. We don't have anything to do. So we're gonna mulligan to five. This is the Dark Ritual that we were talking about. Doesn't do anything. I think that we have to keep this. Um, Hmm. Yeah, let's keep this. And let's put back the Chrome Monks and an Ancient Tomb. Play a Polluted Delta and pass. Best thing that we could draw is a Thoughtseize. We can Thoughtseize ourselves and put an Atraxa in the graveyard. City of Traders. Uh oh. My dark ritual. Oh. Blood Moon. Well, I do actually have basics. So that's just fine. So Entomb wouldn't do anything right now because the World Gorger Dragon Loop needs a second thing to happen and we don't have that second thing yet like Orcish Bowmasters or the One Ring. But once we do, then Entombing for Bowmasters or World Gorger would definitely work. Okay, so they turn one Blood Moon and it didn't work out quite as well for them as they had hoped, I would imagine. Uh, it's not working out super well for us. We just need something to do. We've got the requisite mana to cast the one ring, or now they have three mana. What are they going to do with three mana? Fable. That's a pretty good follow-up. If they discard something, I can animate dead it. Oh, that's not the worst. Um, pretty bad against their 2-2, two -two, but... It's a card that I can cast. Um, discard Fury, discard Fury, discard Fury. Fury! <laughs> they did it. They did the thing. I'm very excited about that. Yeah, that's fine. That's also fine. Mm, 
how do you like a little taste of your own medicine, opponent? Two and two. Love it, love it. We are attacking for s two now, and then six a turn after this. Um, our dark ritual is turned off, so it's going to imprint under chrome monks, and I'm actually going to do that now before they can do something that would prevent that from happening. I don't know. But they discarded the fury for us. That was very helpful. Okay, this reflection could be problematic if they have a fury of their own. But I'm not sure. Yeah, they can create a talk, uh, copy of a creature they control, not they own. So, oh, well, they just got rid of that one. So that's fine. Well, we are kind of in a little bit of a lull in the game now that they've Shatter Skull smashing. Well, what's the... Yeah, Shatter Skull smashing. My, their fury. Hmm, do I want to trade here? I think so. I don't want this to copy something like a Goblin Rabble Master or anything. That would be pretty unfortunate for me. They have one card in hand. They've been hitting a lot of their land drops. And if we hit enough Lotus Petals, we could potentially hard cast an Atraxa. We just need Lotus Petal, Lotus Petal, Lotus Petal. So Kenzen, okay, that is a clock. It's better than anything they've had so far. So we'll see how that goes. Hmm. Another land. They just have these two creatures. Um, Orcish Bowmasters would be nice here. That would be better. That would be much better. Yeah, I'll take a Shieldred instead. Big ups. Potentially the best draw in the entire deck. And, I mean, we had four of them, but, you know, something. Okay, so they cannot chump... Or they can't kill Shieldred in combat. They can only jump. And we have the One Ring, so that's great too. Back-to-back uh, -back real strong draws. Let's play this out. Uh, I'm not going to draw yet. Uh, I'll gain two life when I do, which is just fine, but um, we'll see. See what happens. Okay, our opponent has conceded instead. He loved to see it. Um, Serenity, Echoing Truth seem very good. So to snuff out. The attracts a bit pretty unwinnable from their point of view if we were able to animate dead and Atraxa. Um, they're going to have ley lines almost assuredly. They've seen animate dead already. Bowmasters doesn't really do anything against them. We were able to chump block a single creature, or double block a single creature, excuse me. Um, it's not at its finest here. 
I like the Chrome Moxin. I like the Lotus Petals. I like the Dark Rituals. Uh, the One Ring Echo might not be as necessary. Um, do I get rid of one of the reanimate auras because I'm expecting graveyard hate. Um, I think so. Now, Dance of the Dead is pretty good. Cost two mana to untap something. But it's a plus one, plus one, which is with, like, lifelink uh, against a fairly aggressive deck. That would be good. You know what? Let's just try that. Let's try that out. Let's get rid of the animate dead and see what happens. So Serenity's Echoing Truth snuff out. Let's give it a whirl. Uh, this is a turn three Shieldred, and I can grief them at some point, uh, echoing truth for a problem that I have later on. I'll keep this. Leyline. Okay. Well, I don't know if that's a problem, for, actually. Uh, this... Chalice of the Void might be more of a problem, but even then, it's not that big of a deal. Not yet. That's nice, too. That gives me a turn two Shieldred. If I imprint a black source, which is a little unfortunate because I do want to grief my opponent but I can't do that and turn to a Shieldred. I think that I'm going to grief them though. I think that that's more important. Three mana is where this deck really starts popping off and they, oh wow. Yeah, I can discard their land and they don't have three mana. Look at that. Uh double-faced, modal double-faced cards having positives and negatives. They just uh, don't have three mana now to do anything, hopefully. Hopefully they don't find it. And that will give me enough time to put this Shieldred into play. Which would punish the Fable, which will block the Lelia. All kinds of good stuff. Okay, now even if they were to have found a Blood Moon and a Red Source, which I doubt that they would actually play a Blood Moon, but um, okay. So they bolt themselves. They probably play the Lelia. Yep. Are these the same printing? Okay, just making sure. And no red. Well, now they found the Shatter Skull Smashing, which is the best card for them to have drawn for me if it was a red source because it's one that deals a bunch of damage to them. And they exiled a mountain. Okay, keep exiling those red sources. And I will get... I could get an underground sea. I should probably get an underground sea. I have this echoing truth. And I have another black source already. Rolled up, ready to go. Okay, Shieldred down. And before this Lelia gets particularly big, uh, it's nice. And this really shuts down their Fable, uh, which is great because they are very disincentivized now to play out this fable and actually use it to churn through their deck, which I'm guessing was part of their plan. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Uh, at your own peril. 
I mean, maybe they just need the mana eventually. I'm not sure. No, I should have. Um, okay, so what can I do? I can't thought seize them. I can get them to double block and I've got a combat trick here and then get them to commit to, uh, no, Alex, we totally can. I can echoing truth the, one of the blockers, the goblin shaman, or actually I should probably bounce the Lelia because that's the one that, uh, Okay. Combat trick. Look at that. Um, who would have thought? I'm gonna just play out some of these cards that would be problematic to have stuck behind a chalice for zero. Yeah, they should totally loot. They did. I don't think that that's a good idea, my friend. Eh. I think that this is gonna be, okay, this is it. This is a two, three. Uh, not the greatest showing for this deck, but it was a pretty good showing towards the end of the league. We got to beat up on Reanimator. We got to animate dead a Fury, which is really cool. Um, that was actually pretty neat. So overall, I had a lot of fun with this deck, despite it not performing particularly well. Two, three, not a great showing. This is a this is a core idea that needs a lot of work. If you're gonna be pairing World Gorger Dragon with Orcish Bowmasters, which was like the original idea for me to build this, uh, I didn't build this deck, but to choose a deck like this, uh, there's actually uh, uh, Alejandro um, S O six three on Twitter um, built this up, forewarned with it, tweeted out that it was really cool and a lot of fun, and yeah, I agree, it was a lot of fun. I think that there needs to be a lot of tweaking. They actually pr produced some in their Twitter. Uh, post about this. They were talking about some of the things that they might change. I just left it as is. I thought that this was a reasonable option. We never got to play against Fair Blue, where this Ravenloft adventurer would introduce the initiative into a game. Really excited about that. Sideboard Juke just completely turn into this like mono black mid range control deck. Um, I like this. I think that this is pretty fun. It's an enjoyable deck. It off the beaten path. Obviously, you're playing two of the most talked about cards in Legacy or in in, in Magic right now. Orcish Bowmasters and the One Ring. They performed well today. I'm not gonna not gonna discount that. That was a fantastic showing, especially of the One Ring. Orcish Bowmasters had its moments against Elves, especially, but yeah. Um, the one ring really carried a lot of stuff. Um, so I'll leave it there. This is potentially something that you, dear listener, watcher, viewer, can uh, brew and tweak to your whimsy. Yeah. Uh, with that, I will see you guys next week. Look ahead um, Thursday morning, we'll, or whatever time zone you're in, about 12 hours before the stream starts, there should be a poll that you can vote on what you want me to play. There are three other options that were pretty exciting. I do say my, so, so if I do say so myself, there we go. And uh, there'll be another set of four ready to go next week. I'll catch you around.